Um, this is a classic. Why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria? Beyond Heroes and Holidays, this is a good book. So, you know, other than just, you know, Black History Month and Martin Luther King, what are some other ways that can really have empower, you know, African-American children that may be in your classroom? The one, this is sort of my favorite, um, Miseducation of Negro. This was written a hundred years ago by Carter G. Woodson. Are you familiar with that name, Carter no. G. Woodson? He is the father of Black History Month. I got a law degree, so I'm an attorney as well, and that's actually what brought me here as I was working for the Social Security Administration. We have four children. When we were raising them, we found it very, very difficult to find children's books that reflected them. Um, that had, you know, African-American characters or heroes or even about African-American culture and history. Our youngest three were um, in middle school at that time and they started to come home being pretty dissatisfied with what they were being fed. There was rarely any mention of African-Americans or contributions and if it was, it usually was relegated to two, to two areas, slavery and civil rights. We learned that other parents also had the frustration Teachers, educators also had the frustration about how we need more materials or um, diverse materials. This is my third year in the library, and so every year I, I buy from them. It's hard to say just how many books, a lot. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if I can give you a number. I have 600 students, right? So I have every single student in the school, and so it's my job to make sure that, that when they come in this space, they see themselves. <laughs> Out of that came I See Me. And even the name, right? We wanted children to see themselves, you know, in the literature that day that they read. I know I read the children's books all the time. I may be reading to my daughter, but I'm like, I'm getting a kick out of this book. At the old space, um, we had individual and and his mother came in one day. His name is Sidney Keys the third. His mother's Winnie uh, Elizabeth, and um, so he, the mother was surprising the little boy to come in to kind of you know say we're gonna go out somewhere. She heard about I see me, so she brought him in and he said the bookstore. You know he's like nine years old at the time. He's like mm, okay, but when he came in and he saw every book. You know, looked like him. He he could really relate to those books. He just blew his mind, and so he picked up one of the books and he sat down on this carpet right here. And she's a blogger, and she just started to record him. Just you know, you know. So she posted that. It went viral. It just it took off. Ten thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand hits. And then out of that, also starting a book club, right? What's called Books and Bros. He's tackling literacy in the African American community one book at a time, and. He's only 11 years old. Well, everybody, please welcome Sydney Keys the third. Well, Sydney, there's one more person that you've inspired. I just want you to know how proud I am of you, how I know what it means to be a young brother in school trying to convince other brothers to read, and sisters too, I hope, and just keep doing it because this, I know for sure, Sydney Keys, it's gonna pay off. And to me, that's like, it's two sided, right? One is, that's great because, you know, out of that experience, I've just seen Sydney grow and blossom to this great leader. Um, the other side of that, though, is why is it so novel for an African American boy to be excited about books? I can't just rest and let that be okay, you know, on the status quo. I can't say enough about the store. Um, I spend the majority of my time here because this store offers us the doorway for us to say, okay, what do you want to do? Or what do we see ourselves as? To me, that's priceless. 